All right, let's look at this one. An insulated rigid tank initially contains 1.5 pound mass of helium at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 PSI A. Paddle wheel with power rating of 0.02 horsepower is operated within the tank for 30 minutes. Determine the final temperature of the helium gas and the final pressure of the helium gas. Okay, so let's kind of unpack what it's saying here. Insulated, so there's no heat transfer. Q is zero. Rigid tank, let's keep that in the back of our minds. Constant pressure. Um, it tank contains that much uh, helium, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 PSI A. A paddle wheel with a power rating has operated within the tank for 30 minutes during the final temperature. Okay, so we need to keep up with all the energy, right? Q plus W equals delta E. All right, Q plus W equals delta E. There's no Q right here. The W, uh, yeah, I think that this paddle wheel, right? This paddle wheel might be a, a, a work that we are, uh, you know, putting into our system. Um, and should this delta E be delta H or delta U? Well, it's a rigid tank. It's a rigid tank, so this should be delta U. Now, should we use... Uh, our lowercase, our specific energy equation, should we use our uppercase total, should we use our power? My first sense it gets to use the power because they give us this horsepower, but then they say something about horsepower and the time. If they give me the power and the time, I can take the power times the time to get the total, right? Total divided by time, right? The work divided by time equals power. If they give me the power times the time then I can have total. So anyway, that's why I'm using the capital W, uh, capital U. I'm using the uppercase capital total work instead of W dot U dot. Okay. So here on the left hand side, I've got the work due to the paddle wheel. And on the right hand side, I've got delta capital U, which I'll say is M delta lower U which I'm going to say is because we are, did it tell us to use specific heats or we're just, you know, in this, um, sometimes it'll say use constant specific heats. Um, I'm just going to do this since we're in this uh, section. I'm going to use C, let's see, should I use CP delta T or CV delta T? It doesn't matter what it says up here. It just matters what we're looking for. We're looking for a delta U, so we need CV delta T. We need C, V, delta T. Okay, uh, what's the work done by the paddle wheel? 0.02 horsepower times 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to leave a lot of room for a unit conversion right here because uh, I don't think the units on the left-hand side are going to equal to my units on the right-hand side. But let's, let's see. What do I have on the units on the right-hand side? I have 1.5 pound mass. CV. All right, what is a CV for helium at 80 degrees Fahrenheit? What is a CV for helium at 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, let me go to property tables. Uh, let me go to table. Uh, all right, so helium's right there. Let's see. Do I have helium? Man, I, I was hoping that I would have it at this table A to B, but I don't have helium. I'm not going to attempt this right here, even if helium was on here, which it probably is somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's not even on here. Well, all right, so my only option, even though this is at, oh, whoa, sorry, 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 sorry. Y'all, I am completely wrong. I need to look at my English units. All right, uh, I've got helium at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I, it's not even on that one if I tried. My only option is right here. Yeah. The, uh, C, let's see, what did I need? CP or CV? It called for CV, 0.753 BTU per pound mass Rankin. BTU per pound mass Rankin. 0.753 um, all right, let's see. And that, that was at 80. Oh, so uh, that was at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's going from 80 to something higher. Uh, so we can just use that at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Go back to our notes. Uh, use 0.753 
BTU per pound mass Rankin uh, delta T. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna solve for delta T uh, because I know everything else. I know work. I know mass CV. I'm gonna solve for delta T. Add it to 80 degrees. So some people would would put 80 degrees in there. But all right. So anyway, on the left hand side, I've got BTU per. No, I've just got BTU, right? On the right hand side. On the right hand side, I have BTU. How can I get BTU from horsepower and minute? Let's go to our conversion factor sheet. Maybe power or some of these uh, right here. Uh, I've got horsepower and minute. Yeah, maybe that one right there. One horsepower is 42.41 BTU per minute. One horsepower is 42.41 BTU per minute. Go back to our... So if I want BTU, and I want to get rid of horsepower, one horsepower was... Oh, sorry, what did I say? Uh, from the property tables. One horsepower from the conversion factor. Mm, 42.41 BTUs per minute. 42.41... 42.41 BTUs per minute. So does that... Yes. There we go. There we go. There we go. I would get a change in temperature. 22.5 Rankin. But uh, when we're talking about changes in temperature, uh, this is also a, a rise, right? Rankin and Fahrenheit rise and fall at the same levels, right? They're, they're all separated by the same degrees. Uh, so there's no need to convert that, right? Just take 80 plus 225. 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit is my final temperature. That's my final temperature. Okay, it also asks for the final pressure. I could go around the block using PV equals RT, uh, but I don't, don't know uh, V. Uh, but if I recognize that this is an ideal gas and it's a closed uh, system, then P1, V1, T1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Uh, the V is the same on the right and left-hand side. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over, over T2. P1 was 50 PSIA. T1 was 80, but ideal gas law has to be absolute temperature. Ideal gas law has to be absolute temperature. Did this have to be absolute temperature? No, because it's a change in temperature. It's a change in temperature. But this is not a delta T, so I need to add 460 uh, P2 over 102.5 plus 460 to get P2 52.1 PSIA. 52.1 PSIA. So take a step back and look at what we did. We kind of wrote our energy equation. We thought about all the heat transfer. There was none. All the work besides boundary work, which was just this paddle wheel. Uh, and then the right-hand side of our equation was a delta U, and I found delta U by CV delta T. CV delta T. And then from that, because it was an ideal gas, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Because it was a, a rigid tank, V1 was equal to V2. I can, if I know three of these, P1, T1, and, P, and T2, I can get P2. All right.